So we've got a question here, we need to find the maximum likelihood estimate of theta, and we call that theta hat. And we've got seven observations, of which x equals 2, 4, 3, 3, 1, 1, and 2. Now, theta we're given is between 0 and 1 somewhere, and the probability that x equals 1, 2, 3, or 4 is given by these four functions here. Now, we can just do a quick random check. It's not the correct way to do it, but one random check we could do is if we plug in zero for all these thetas, these will all sum up to one. If we plug in one for all these thetas, we'll also sum to one. And the same for a half and the same for all the possible values in theta. That's just a rough calculation, just to make sure that these probability mass functions are all correct. Now, these variables are all discrete variables. So they're all exact whole numbers, so one, two, three, and four. So there's no one and a half, there's no two and a half, etc. So first of all, to find uh, theta, uh, the maximum likelihood estimate of theta, we need to find the likelihood value for theta. So for the function for likelihood of theta, we write this. So the likelihood of theta equals the product from i equals one, now we've got seven observations, so we go from n equals 1 to n equals 7, and it's the probability mass functions of all the xi's with regards to theta. So that's our formula for working them out. So now what we need to do is, is to write all of these in turn for each one of these observations and take the product of them. So the first one is 2. So then we write 1 minus theta over 4. So 1 minus theta over 4. Actually, we don't need the brackets. Second one is the fourth one. Then we multiply that by 3 times 1 minus theta over 4. Then we've got 3 twice. So we write this one twice. Now we have to write it twice. We just can't do multiply by... Uh, 2 times theta over 4, we have to write that both times. You'll see why in a minute when we come to take a log. Two ones, that's 3 theta over 4. And a 2 again, so that's 1 minus theta over 4. Okay. Now we can just simplify this up a little bit with putting the like, like, likewise terms for theta together. So we have 1 minus theta, 1 minus theta, and 3 times 1 minus theta. So now we can write that as 3 times 1 minus theta cubed. And then the single thetas together. So we've got theta, theta, 3 theta, 3 theta. So that becomes 9 theta to the power of 4. And then that will still be divided by, not forgetting all the 4s, 4 to the power of 7, as there's 7 observations. So that's our L of theta. So let's just write that in there now. So that equals 3, 1 minus theta to the power of 4, sorry, to the power of 3, 9 theta to the power of 4, 4 to the power of 7 is the, what we're dividing it by. Okay. So that's what we've got now. So the next stage is we need to take the log of this. So the log of this, so basically we call this now lowercase l, l of theta. That equals the log of l theta. So basically we just take the log of this. So then that leads us to take the constant multiples out. So we've got 3 times 9, that's 27 over 4 over 7. So we give that as log of, open bracket, 27 over 4 to the 7. We don't need to work out 4 to the 7 just yet. And then without the constant multiples, we take the log of each of these using the log property. So the three can come out front. 
So as you know, these are all multiplied, these terms are all multiplied, when we're doing log property, we just add them. So now we've got the three times the log of one minus theta. And then we're going to add theta multiplied by four. So the four will come out front and that's four theta plus four. Let's just write that as log four log of theta. Okay. So that's an important function there that we need. That's our L prime of theta. Okay, so I'm just going to write that in here now. Okay, so our L prime of theta, that equals log 27 over 4 to the 7, that's made actually like the smallest 7, so it's 4 to the power of 7, plus 3 log 1 minus theta, plus 4 log theta. Okay, so the next stage is, we need to take the derivative of this. So we can just go straight in and take the derivative of that, that's going to be absolutely fine. So let's go straight in with that. So the derivative of a constant multiple with respect to theta is going to be zero. So that disappears. Now the derivative of this will give us 3 over 1 minus theta. And then not forgetting the chain rule for the theta, because it's minus theta, we end up with a minus sign. And then derivative of 4 log theta is simply plus 4 over theta. So that's our derivative. Okay. So, give a bit of space on the board now. So what we need to do now is set this derivative to zero. So, L of theta equals zero. And this will then give us a candidate for our theta. So what we're going to do now is set that to minus three, one minus theta, plus 4 theta equals 0. So then that will give us 4 over theta equals 3 over 1 minus theta. Okay, so now we can just cross multiply. We'll have 4 times 1 minus theta equals 3 theta. Divide each side by 4. So we'll have 1 minus theta equals 3 quarters of theta. Add theta to each side. So this basically would be 1 over 4 over, or would be 4 over 4. So that's 4 over 4. So we'll just multiply that by 1, which is not changing the value. So now we're going to add 4 over 4 to each side. So we get 1 equals 7 over 4 theta. In which case theta, in this case, will be 4 over 7. Multiply that by 4 over 7, we get 1. So therefore, our candidate, so what we're saying at the moment is our candidate equals 4 over 7. Now we want to check if that's a valid candidate or not. So to do that, we then now need to find the second derivative of our Okay, so checking this is a good candidate, what we need to do now is take the second derivative of this. So if this is our first derivative, our second derivative is going to be the derivative of that. So let's go careful here. So we've got 3 over 1 minus theta. Now the second derivative of that, we're now going to have to square this. So that's going to be squared. And we've got the minus 3 here. Now, what happens with this, when you take the second derivative of the, the denominator, you put a minus into the numerator, which would then make this a plus. But also with the chain rule, we now need to take the derivative of 1 minus theta. So then this stays as a negative. And then here, 4 over theta becomes 4 over theta squared. And then changing the sign of the 
numerator, we end up with a minus. Okay, so now we've got the second derivative, we need to find out if this is going to be less than zero or not. We don't know. So what do we see? Well, we've got one minus theta squared, so this is always positive, and a theta squared, which is also positive. So the denominators are never zero, uh, sorry, are never um, negative. So a negative over a positive, and here we've got a negative positive over positive. So this here is always going to be less than zero, because this term here is always going to be negative. This here, negative, and this term here is also going to be subtracted another positive number, so this here will also yield more positive. So therefore we can say that this is a good candidate. Okay, there we go.